Hi, I'm here with Professor Jan Toporowski. He is the co-guest editor with Professor Piotr Zuk of the most recent special issue of the Economic and Labour Relations Review. That special issue was called Capitalism After Communism, Europe and the World 1989 to 2019. Professor Toporowski, thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. To begin with, I think that there's this great argument in the Hubert Gabrish paper that I want to introduce early and get your opinions on. He claims there that the transformation from regulated to unregulated capitalism in the global economy since the, 1980, uh, since the 1980s has led to societies being deeply divided economically, socially, and culturally. And as an outsider to the post-communist European states, it seems that they've traced this exact story over the exact same period, but in a much more intense way, a move from hyper-regulated communism to hyper-unregulated capitalism. Is this accurate as a, th as a thumbnail sketch? Uh, yeah, I think it is uh, 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 accurate, um, but I, th I think it has to be more, one has to be more specific about it. There's two aspects of this regulation. On the one hand, there's, uh, financial regulation, and that's a, a complex issue that I just don't want to go into uh, now. Uh, but the second and uh, a more important uh, 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 form of regulation or, or kind of regulation, or class of regulation, uh, is the regulation of the labour market. And this is absolutely fundamental to trends uh, that have emerged in the last uh, 30 years or so, 30 or 40 years in uh, uh, not just in Eastern Europe, but uh, uh, in, uh, in most countries of the world. In the first place, this deregulation is, I think, uh, 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 what uh, uh, accounts for the, uh, the, uh, the massive increases in inequality, in, uh, in income inequality, uh, in in most countries of the world, I think that this is an argument which uh, Richard Koo has recently uh, put forward. But I, uh, you know, I, I agree uh, uh, wholeheartedly uh, with that. And uh, the other side of uh, the this this deregulation has been the movement of labour across borders, and the, uh, uh, this is. Uh, you know, politically and socially very, very important because it's what, it's the fear of this that lies behind many of the uh, uh, populist uh, political movements that have emerged in the last uh, uh, 10, 20 years. Um, so uh, we, we, you know, it's, uh, this is the, it, uh, this I think is the most important uh, kind of, uh, deregulation, which we, which we need to understand, and of course, in the in the communist times, uh, it, you know this uh, uh, this form of regulation was, you know, very very strict indeed. Well, there is this excellent paper, the Bueller and and Saliger paper within the special issue that that speak yeah. particularly to the experience of migrant workers and this this move from trying to escape exploitation at home to to find exploitative dynamics elsewhere. So. Um, I guess this is uh, there's a focus on labour throughout the the special issue in particular. I would say yes, yes, that's right. Uh, and I think uh, the, uh, 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 the 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 paper on the Baltic states is um, particularly important because I think their their experience of uh, 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 of, of international uh, of in, uh, of integration. In the European economy uh, was particularly uh, painful, uh, especially after the uh, 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 the Latvian uh, uh, crisis uh, uh, of uh, uh, soon after the turn of the century, and the uh, uh, the way in which uh, this was resolved, and the way in which uh, the uh, the markets have tended to resolve these. Uh, by seeing them solely as crises of labour competitiveness, so uh, crises that can only be resolved by uh, uh, by uh, lowering wages, lowering real wages, uh, and this, of course, has a devastating effect on uh, on economies uh, 
you know, because of uh, uh, the, the fall in wage income uh, and expenditure, uh, but also uh, 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 you know, the, uh, the, the political consequences that go with it, which is the uh, 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 you know the rise of uh, uh, right wing uh, movements, uh, right wing movements that in in many cases have st have stolen the uh, uh, the traditional uh, uh, um, arguments of the left by saying, you know, you want higher welfare payments, we'll give you higher welfare payments. You want higher wages, we'll give you higher wages. And th this is uh, 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 this is something for which the left was not prepared. Well, yeah, so the, the political ramifications of these economic transformations is really the, the, uh, the meat of a lot of this special issue. Um, I think we could talk about it in two ways. We could talk about um, the implications for understanding populism and the, the trajectories that we could expect for populism from here. But we could also talk about the possibilities of, of solidarity and of, uh, of, of collectivism moving forward. Did you, which do you think is more useful to talk, which, which experience from these countries is more useful to, to talk about going forward, do you think? I think solidar solidarity is tremendously uh, important, but it's actually a very, very difficult card uh, to play because in, in a context of, or it's a very, very difficult argument to make in the context of, uh, uh, of, of labor, cross-border labor mobility. Mm. Uh, it, it requires, uh, telling people that their problems are not caused by uh, their uh, 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 by the influx of refugees uh, and, and migrants. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 I think, uh, one of the uh, one of the last people who made this uh, made the argument for it was. Uh, 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 J.K. Galbraith, actually, the, the last time I uh, I saw him, the great American uh, economist who uh, who argue, who argued for free movement of labour, uh, because he said uh, that's what made America strong, and I think he, 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 he had a point. Uh, uh, I, I think that he's, uh, um, uh, but as I say, it's a very very difficult uh, argument. Uh, to make because it goes against all those arguments uh, uh, put forward by um, uh, the more uh, 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 by nationalist politicians who argue that uh, uh, you know the, these people are different. Uh, you know, you, one has to be beware of these uh, differences. These people bring. Uh, disease, uh, they bring, uh, 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 they lower your wages, they are responsible for your problems. So I think that we, that uh, uh, one, one has to confront this problem and, and, and deal with it. So th this is, this I think is for, uh, it, it, it's, it's one of the great political and social challenges uh, of uh, uh, of the transformation uh, of the changes that have taken place since 1989, but it's a it, 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 it's a problem that hasn't just afflicted Eastern Europe. It's it, it, as we can see, it's global. Absolutely. Um, well, I guess I've, I've tried to draw out some uh, commonalities and some and some common problems faced by uh, the the Western liberal economies today and the. The, the states that, that transitioned from communism to capitalism. Um, I'm kind of interested in the opposite question as well. Is there uh, a literature emerging on the uh, Eastern European capitalism as distinct from other forms of capitalism, German capitalism, American capitalism? Is that, is that where this literature is going as a final question? Uh, no, I, I, well, it should, I think, work because what, um, but 
you know, sadly, it turns uh, uh, th th there is very little uh, consideration uh, really uh, of, of the nature of this uh, capitalism. There's a tendency to pin labels on the kind of uh, capitalism that has emerged in Eastern Europe, uh, you know, predatory capitalism, uh, mafia capitalism, and so on. But I, it, it really boils down to the fact that the uh, uh, the capital, uh, the capital, certainly the capitalism that emerged in Eastern Europe is different to the one uh, that uh, we know in uh, some of the, the the in Western Europe. Uh, 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 North America. Uh, it, it's really a capitalism in which Eastern Europe is a, 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 a sump, a reserve of cheap labour. And this is how it's being uh, uh, played by, uh, uh, to some extent, by the, uh, uh, the policy makers. I, uh, 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 you know, is it possible for a, a more modern form of capitalism to, uh, to emerge in this kind of uh, situation. Uh, I really, uh, I, I really uh, doubt it uh, very much, but it's the, it is this, uh, uh, there, are, there, there are those peculiarities which don't uh, arise in, in, in other countries, in other more, uh, more industrialized countries, and they really challenge uh, the, um, the the whole idea that capitalism is in, is in some way uh, a natural, spontaneous uh, um, social formation. Hmm. Sounds like this special issue is uh, the starting point of a of a series of big research questions, in in going in a number of different directions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's fasc fascinating. I look forward to it. I hope, uh, I hope our readers get their teeth into it. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, the special issue is currently ungated, so please feel free to, to pop on, have a look at it uh, as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>